All right, time to dive into the box again. Probably another golden book, though I think there's more Star Wars books in here. Oh, how about, whoa. Oh, a very fragile book, Peter Pan and Wendy. <laughs> oh, wow. That, yeah. that is, wow. Um, I think we have some scotch tape. <laughs> I'm sure we do. Ah, second start to the right and straight on until morning. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. If I approve the video, you saw that this is another very well-loved book. Walt Disney's Peter Pan and Wendy. So old that it was only 29 cents. Also, it's D110, which means it's from this first series of Disney books and the 10th story they put out. Told by Annie North Bedford. Illustrations by the Walt Disney Studio. Ah, this one apparently says that. Most of them just say Walt Disney or something like that. Oh, I think the other one said Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Evend Earl. Hmm, this is the 1969 edition. But in 1969, it was already the seventh printing. Golden Book and Disney are very popular. Mm-hmm. Once upon a time, there were three children. Wendy, John, and Michael, darling by name. Okay, this is interesting. The art's good, but look at the background. Yeah. The mermaids, Peter Pan. Pretty sure that's a TP. Mm-hmm. And then the Indian princess. Are they hinting that this all might just be a dream? <laughs> they liked bedtime, because every night in the nursery, Wendy's told stories about Peter Pan. Peter is a little boy who decided never to grow up. He lives in a faraway Neverland. Full of adventure and fun. I'm really enjoying the art style in this book. It's like very, it has line work in it, but it's very minimalist. A lot of the definition and contrast is by color. And that's a lot of detail for a rug in the nursery. My brain, my brain just went, if this was a Gravity Falls golden book, I would be looking at those locks trying to decipher a code. Yeah. Well, let's see. B. Let's see if we just go with the front ones. B. That's not a letter. E, L, N, A. Like I said, it was just it popped into my head right there. Mm hmm. The children loved to hear stories about him. And Peter Pan himself, with the fairy Tinkerbell, would come flying down and sit on the nursery windowsill to hear the stories. One night, Peter asked the children to come with him to the Neverland. Oh, no sewing the shadow on? Nope, no sewing the shadow on. And no tempting Peter Pan with all the stories that Wendy could tell the boys. Wendy was delighted, and Peter taught them how to fly. It was as easy as one, two, three. All it took was a wish and a pinch of pixie dust. Then out the nursery window they flew, and away to Neverland. The Neverland was a wonderful place, an island in a nameless sea. Mm. Nice start again. Tinkerbell doesn't have much definition in this one. No, she really doesn't. Also, we skipped Nana. Oh, the dog. And the parents. We haven't seen any of them. Well, you have to kind of truncate it a little bit to squish it into a yeah. certain number of pages. Mm-hmm. There were fairies living in the treetops. There were mermaids swimming in a lagoon. There were real red Indians in a village on a cliff. There were woods full of wild animals. Pausing a moment for a cultural insensitivity. <laughs> Best of all, there was a ship full of pirates. Wicked ones. With a specially wicked leader. Captain Hook. Best of all? Yes. Best of all. I know pirates are cool and everything, but if you're listing up stuff, pirates are usually not the best thing to encounter if you want to have fun. No, ninjas are better, but that's a different splat fest. <laughs> Wendy, John, and Michael knew at first sight that they would love the Neverland. And they did. They liked Peter's wonderful underground house with lots of hidden doorways and a great big hollow tree. There, they met the Lost Boys, who shared Peter's home. And the boys were delighted that Wendy had come to tell bedtime stories to them. And uh, now we drop that little thing in there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, they pretty much match the ones from the movie, though I'm 
Mm, yeah, I think there was one that was dressed as a skunk. Mm-hmm. I don't see him here. Yeah, but those are very straight tails, and they and they match. I don't remember the skunk being a twin. I don't either, but adaptation and liberty. Mm -hmm. But they did not spend much time in that underground house. There were too many exciting things to do. Sometimes they played at war with the Red Indians, who were really their very good friends. Uh huh. Yes, because they even say that in the movie that it's just a game. They're like, oh, we're caught. Now let us go. Uh, I can't let you go this time because you guys kidnapped our princess. No, we didn't. Sometimes they had trouble with the wicked pirates who were their enemies. One day, the pirates stole away Princess Tiger Lily of the Indian tribe. Nice art. Smitty looks good. Mm-hmm. And I believe you mean Smee. Smee, yeah. And Captain Hook rocks. The Indian chief... Her father was all upset, but Peter Pan rescued Tiger Lily and brought her safely home again. Holy smokes! Introduce conflict, next page resolve. Yep. That made Captain Hook, the leader of the pirates, madder at Peter Pan than he had ever been. I'll catch that pan if it's the last thing I do, he vowed, and he laid a wicked plan. And there goes the mics. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It was perfect. <laughs> he kidnapped Wendy, John, and Michael and all the lost boys while Peter was away. And he took them to his pirate ship. Now, my fine fellows, said Captain Hook, when he had the boys and Wendy on his ship, which will it be? Will you all turn pirates? Or do you want to walk the plank and fall kerplash into the sea? Kaplash. Kerplash. Hmm. Never heard that onomatopoeia before. Also, they can all fly. Who cares? Eh. Point. <laughs> like, sure, I'll walk the plank and I'll dive off and I'll go fly back to the island. Yeah, do they remember that, though? Specifically, like, Wendy and those two, because the Lost Boys, they might have it in their system to automatically think about it. But Wendy, John, and Michael, not so much. It was something that always bothered me about that part. I guess we'll turn pirates, said the boys, but Wendy would have none of that. I think you should be ashamed of yourself, she said. Peter Pan will rescue us. And she was right, for at the last minute, Peter Pan appeared. He beat Captain Hook in a good, fair fight, and he freed every one of his friends. They scared those bad pirates into jumping overboard and rowing away in their boat. Hmm, I thought of another character we're missing so far, but I wonder if he'll appear in the book. He might, because we just had people uh, jumping overboard, and the water is his territory. Nope. Hurrah! cried Pan. Now the pirate ship is ours. Where shall we sail to? cried the boys. It's time we went home, Wendy said. If you must go home, we'll sail there, said Peter Pan. With a wish and a pinch of pixie dust, they made that pirate ship fly. And away they all sailed on that ship, through the sky to the nursery window again. The children's parents could scarcely believe that their children had been to the Neverland. But Wendy, John, and Michael, even when they grew up, never forgot Peter Pan. Aw, that yeah. was actually about TikTok. Yeah, no crocodile. One of the best parts. Yeah, and um, one of the worst things about the sequel is they had to go and try and make an octopus like him. There, there was a sequel? Remember when Disney went through its uh, video sequel phase? I do not recall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they tried to update it so that it was uh, less offensive and more empowering because Wendy's always such a girl. You know, always wanting to mother the boys. But her daughter, Jane, is a tomboy. Yeah, I remember what I just said. I do not recall. <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. Also, I want to give up kill sticks and rethink my life. That's a good one, though. Someone actually analyzed that scene. It was really awesome. Mm -hmm. That was probably the best part of that movie. <laughs> well, the action sequences were pretty good. Story, not so much. Yeah, 
But this was fun and ooh, very shortened. Which, you know, Golden Book, 75 minute movie, you kind of have to. Yeah. Because we skipped all sorts of things, like how Tinkerbell hates Wendy and tricked the boys into trying to shoot her and the whole thing with buttons and kisses and thimbles. And bombs. There was a bomb. And, of course, TikTok. TikTok. I mean, come on. Even in the stage production, he's one of the best things because you're like, wow, that is an awesome suit. Though, I must say I liked Hook. Classy villainy. Even though he had a lot of slapstick to him because Disney. Mm -hmm. This has been A Little Golden Book. Walt Disney's Peter Pan and Wendy. Told by Annie North Bedford. Illustrations by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Evan Earl. I mean, come on, they even got the feather crossing the T there. Very nicely done. Mm-hmm. Though so I just noticed something. Peter Pan's face in the front cover is a little awkward compared to what Wendy's looks like. A little bit, yeah. So that seems to be slightly a thing with the front covers on the Disney ones. Because remember how Snow White looked? Mm-hmm. Huh. But on to the closing. It's Disney. Unless they threw the Golden Book in the vault, it's got to still be in print. I don't think they vault the books, so check for a link. And maybe we'll drive Lux crazy and dig up a link for the direct-to-video sequel, Return to Neverland. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather watch the live-action movie with Robin Williams. Yes, because Rufio! <laughs> A.K. a certain prince with a scar on his face. <laughs> Scar's on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and, of course, shopping, Ebates... You know, that's a thing. How have I had zero clicks? Because you don't get many views on this channel. <laughs> Good point. Please spread the word. <laughs> Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>